Hey everyone, Boozer here. Welcome back to another video. Um, in today's video, we're going to be talking about the uh, Fusion schedule um, that was just dropped a couple hours ago by Plarium. Um, for Pytheon, this is the champion. It's in-game in the index already. So, I mean, yeah, he just looks so badass. The purple staff, the big wings, the dragon head, the big horns. Like, just so badass. Um, so I'm going to go through... Um, the schedule in detail and day by day what we're supposed to do uh, offer um, some free to play advice um, mainly just to be as efficient as possible so I'll offer um, what I will be doing uh, and hopefully you guys have something similar or you guys get some ideas from what I'm doing uh, if you guys are just tuning in and you guys don't know what the fusion is about or what's happening basically today is the first day of the fusion for this champion he has a small heal on his A1. His A2 is a full team cleanse on a three turn cooldown um, with the block div buffs. Um, and his A3 is a full team revive with turn meter and a strengthen buff. Both on very standard good cooldowns. Uh, his passive is really strong. It's a full team damage mitigation based on uh, the amount of buffs on your team. Great base stats. His base stats did not disappoint. Uh, good base speed, good base HP. Very, very good stats. Uh, I mean, this champion is just insane, insane carry. I don't, uh, I don't believe that he is not worth the hype. For a fusion champion, he's he's a he's for a fusion champion, he's top two or top three, maybe even top. So, yeah. And if we're talking about comparing a fusion champion to Duchess, there, you know, we shouldn't be like this is this is a gift. <laughs> this is a gift if we're talking about a fusion champion compared to one of the best most sought after champions in the game so let's make sure that we get it um here is the fusion schedule dropped by plarium um, let's go over this um step by step here and what we should be doing so today is the first day literally the fusion dropped maybe like um seven seven hours ago six hours ago so today would be ice golem and champion training that are active um, I would suggest if you have energy reserves to save your energy for this day. So Friday, this is when I would be starting to spend my banked up energy. So I would use energy to do Ice Golem um, to basically line up with this Dungeon Diver part. Um, and then on first day, so today, I would kind of just skip ice golem and just try to tackle a little bit of um, champion training um, so the problem here is if you don't have a good um, way to farm food in ice golem so there's a lot of champions that can do ice golem but they do record uh, do ice golem solo that with food um, but obviously that's going to be a little bit more advanced. So personally, I use um, I use Tomb Lord. Tomb Lord can do um, Ice Golem 23 very efficiently. Um, another champion that can do it is actually um, a recent one. This guy, Orn. So Orn can do it. Um, he can do it. He can do it uh, solo Ice Golem 23 with uh, food. So four food champions. So. It's not going to be too easy because Ice Golem and Fire Knight are not uh, dungeons that really work well with training. So it depends on your account, uh, what you can do. But in terms of energy efficiency, I would definitely do the dungeon, Ice Golem dungeon, on tomorrow, which lines up with the start of Dungeon Divers. And I would try to sprinkle in training along the way as much as you can. 15, point, 15 fragments from. Uh, training so that's probably two steps so it's probably a five and a ten in there um oh i should mention that the breakdown is 115 total fragments achievable without winning any um tournaments so very it's a you know standard kind of flexible uh, flexible schedule from plarium Usually they give us 115 uh, total uh, maximum fragments to achieve. This means that we can skip 15 from this chart. So 15 points from this whole chart we can skip. Um, I mean, if you're totally against champion training, you can skip this first one. You know what I mean? So it's there's some flexibility here. Um, you know, work with what you can do. Um, generally, people try to skip 15 
from here. The summon rush. So people try to skip 15 from here. Um, or they full skip the champion chase. But in my opinion, I wouldn't recommend full skipping the champion chase, especially if um, you know you have limited resources or you've been um, or you're just a low spender. You're going to spend your uh, mystery shards and your ancient shards, basically the lower value shards, in this champion chase tournament. Um, and it's a good it's a good time to do it because it also lines up with two x two x. 2x ancients, right? So it lines up with 2x ancients. Um, so it's a good time to pull. So I would recommend pulling during this time. Um, yeah, and then classic arena. These are like easy ones. Um, assuming that you're in gold, if you're in gold. It should be easy. Um, and it's just a matter of how many gems you have extra if you can't if you're not in gold five. Um, so that's not too bad. Um, hopefully you will be done Ice Golem by Sunday when Fire Knight drops. So you don't um, have to go too hard in Ice Golem be uh, to, to complete the Dungeon Divers because you'll have um, a day or so of Fire Knight to complete the Dungeon Divers. And Dungeon Divers is usually going to be um, more points than a single du uh, Dungeon single dungeon um, uh, to get the frags. So for example, like the dungeon costs would be roughly like 2200 energy. The dungeon divers here would probably cost you like 3500 energy. So you would be spending the rest in Fire Knight anyways. So the hard part in the first couple days is basically getting the training done while you are doing Ice Golem and Fire Knight because these have to be done. Um, you don't have to finish Fire Knight fully uh, but it's also, but it's just more, most efficient to get the Fire Knight tournament into the divers. Um, so Plarium obviously knew what they were doing, and then they threw in the champ training tournament here just to make it really hard for people. Um, I mean, the easiest way to do champ training is with booze if you have them, uh, but that's not going to be the case for most people all the time. So I would recommend going hard today to try to get as much, try to get as much as this done today as you can and then focus on the ice golem and then the fire knight afterwards of course if you're crunching really hard for uh, champ training you can even skip the fire knight and then complete the fire knight in the next following days which will be monday tuesday which will be a little bit uh, a little bit lighter uh, in terms of the artifact enhancements there's three artifact enhancements so please keep in mind these are really expensive now Plarium has been slowly adding to them, conditioning us to accept the cost of uh, the new cost of frags and the new cost of resources. So I would budget, you know, seven or eight million to complete these now each. So you're looking at 21, 24 million. Um, keep in mind that you do ac accumulate res uh, silver along the way, but if you're going in with zero silver right now, I would be slightly worried um, because even though you're completing three events with the train, uh, three events leading into the artifact enhancement, it you might be kind of tight to complete the artifact enhancement, even if you sold everything. Um, so I just keep that in mind. Um, definitely do a gear cleanse if you guys have it. Obviously, silver at the end of the day is just going to be a uh, a gem drain so if you have ample dra uh, gems you can do any artifact enhancement no problem because you can just farm dungeons and sell stuff um, obviously be efficient make sure you guys are upgrading gear during the events um, so yeah and it might be a good time to upgrade gear anyways because you're doing two different dungeons so you get to save some gear so we'll do it that way um, the training event lines up with the champ chase, which is good. So you can pull pull champions and then train at the same time. So it, that's kind of nice. Um, it's always nice, right? So yeah, so I would say the first couple days looks pretty busy, especially with the training event. So hopefully you guys can plan a little bit uh, today. I definitely get on the training today if you guys could do that. Uh, if you guys watch this video in time. Um, Okay, so after that, we're gonna after the Fire Knight tournament, which will probably just uh, lead like 
it, there's not going to be much going on during the Fire Knight event. My guess is they're going to drop um, maybe a guarantee uh, champion soon after this champion chase and the 2x. I would guess they drop a 150. Um, if you're just worried about the fusion, that's 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 a mute point to you. You shouldn't care about what they do afterwards because your main goal is to get this champion. But my guess is that they drop a, a guarantee during this time, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Monday, Tuesday, around here. Just to um, make you feel bad for pulling your ancients. <laughs> um, but that's just a guess. So, okay, Wednesday starts. We got training with the divers. I mean, you're just going to be working here, right? You're just going to be working this anyway, so there's not much going on. You're just going to be doing the training with the divers, so your farming campaign. You're using your free energy. You don't want to use any extra energy at this point. And then you hit the spider tournament. You can go at this one pretty hard. You can basically, um, I, I personally, I don't even have uh, a solo spider uh, farmer, so I can't farm food at the same time. So here is probably where I'll be spending um, free energy, free energy, free energy, and then whatever extra I have is just going to go into training. So usually I use brews for training, so it doesn't affect me too much. But you can probably do free energy uh, spider tournament and then finish the spider tournament. Um, the problem here is that if you complete the Spire Tournament, you won't be able to complete the Dungeon Divers, just like the, the points won't be enough. So the points for Dungeon Divers will either have to come from Champion Training, so Campaign Fights, or Extra Spider. So you have to keep that in mind. Yes, this tournament is going to cost about 2200 but to complete the Divers, it's going to be a lot more. So this chunk of space will this these two events with the divers is it, it's just going to be a, a lot of extra farming that you probably don't need to do but i mean it's just spider so spider is going to be helpful with silver and it's a relatively quick farm most of the time if you guys are struggling on spider um you guys can do um i believe level 10 level 10 offers a uh, disproportionate amount of uh, five star drops uh, relative to other levels so it's actually quite efficient so if you guys can't do spider 20 if you guys can't do like the mid-tier spiders like 16 you guys can drop down to spider 10 uh, hit that up really fast and then you can get this uh, spider tournament done really quickly um, so classic arena these I just assume you can do these these are just energy uh, gem drains so Spider tournament lining up with the artifact enhancement, that's pretty good. You're going to have some extra silver. This is where I would get really worried. Like I said, if you start a tournament with very little silver and you get stopped right here at the first artifact enhancement, you probably needed the golem, the knight, and the training to finish this in terms of total silver cost. And then they'll hit you with another artifact enhancement event right away. And your only source of silver from that point on was spider and a bit of champion training. So doing just spider to fill up 7 or 8 million silver is quite a lot. Um, not going to lie. So I hope you guys were able to save up some silver, at least like 5 million to start. Because I think it's going to be a big... A resource drain on you to farm more silver just to complete this one so at this point the artifact enhancement might this second one might be the one that shows you gives you the most trouble um, if you had zero resources going in so this is where if you paid for shards and stuff uh, this is where you would be probably hurting because the shards are no longer an issue if you paid for them to be ready but the silver will be an issue because you most likely won't wouldn't have bought a big chunk of silver. Uh, so let's hope that's not the case. Uh, we get into artifact enhancement again. Um, so that's seven or eight million. And then we get into this summon rush. So the twenty. This one is probably the big one. This one's the one that everyone will be watching for, because like I said, you sit with one hundred and fifteen total fragments. We discount the tournaments because we can't rely on that. This is where you most people would probably uh, take their 15 off, take their 15 fragments that they can uh, uh, shave off. So usually the summon of rush uh, comes in two tiers of uh, two tiers of fragments, the five and the 15. So usually the five is about 
or sacred, so about 2,000 or 2,150 or whatever they want to do. But it's roughly about four sacreds worth of char of shards. So that'll get you five, right? The second one, the 15, I would say usually comes around eight sacred, so around 4,000 points. You sh you will get the extra 15 uh, from the summon rush. So if you have eight sacreds, you're good. If you have eight sacreds, you're good. Um, you don't have to worry about this. You can pull four, get five, and then shave the 15 off, no problem. Or you can pull eight, get all 20, and then shave off 15. Like for example, you can shave off like you you can shave off the the champion training. You can shave you can shave that off. That's ten, and then you can shave off the last uh, artifact enhancement. Because again, this is going to be another eight million silver. So there's a couple ways you can do it. It offers some flexibility. If you completed everything up to this point and you get to this summon rush, you actually have quite a bit of flexibility. Let's say you're busy most of the week. You land on the summon rush on the Friday, and you're like, hey, I haven't done anything. No training, no spider, no dungeon, no artifact. You pull your shards because you're shard heavy. You saved up or you purchased to prep for this or whatever. Now you have 15 shards you can save. So you can be like, hey, I quit spider, dungeon, artifact. I skip all three of them right now. So I think it's put in a spot during the fusion that is really beneficial for people if you can keep up to this point but of course the first four or five days is the most intensive because like i said this whole training event is basically uh, you know you just do it by itself without being able to get much help from the other dungeons so unless you have a solo ice golem farmer you can't really do two at the same time you know what i mean uh, and most can't solo farm Fire Knight, so the training will have to come basically by itself as a focused task. Um, you can't do it as a byproduct of doing dungeons, for example. Um, okay, so I mean, it's usually a 5 and a 15. They might do something weird and give us a curveball here, but I don't think so. And then the last two tournaments is Dragon and Artifact Enhancements. Dragon is just going to be by itself. Maybe... <laughs> at this time dungeon divers here i mean i would assume they do some kind of thing here like maybe a path of light or something weird uh, that's not associated with the fusion but i would assume since they have divers here divers here i would assume they have something related to di dungeon divers here that's not related to the fusion so you might be able to get some extra additional resources from doing the dragon tournament um, and then finally you have the eight uh, final uh, artifact enhancement so it's it's difficult in the sense that the first couple days will determine the rest and there is flexibility in that clarium is allowing you 15 extra fragments so this lets you um, pick up some from winning tournaments so there are going to be some tournaments that you might have a chance in like um, arena or a dungeon so i think this fusion is very doable um, and usually the roadblocks are shards and in this case if you can only complete one the champion chase and if you can complete everything else you only need a very i mean you need the minimum from summon rush if you win a tournament, you don't even need this. That's the thing. If you can do everything, win one tournament, you can you can skip the summon rush entirely. You know, that's that might be the answer if you have no shards. You just and you, if you have a lot of gems and you have no shards, then try to win one of the tournaments, one of the dungeon tournament. It might not be easy, but if it costs you a thousand shards or uh, sorry, a thousand gems, that's going to be cheaper than having to pay like four sacreds you know what i mean so totally up to you how you guys want to manage it um personally um i have a solo ice i have a solo tomb lord for ice golem so i will be farming food yeah so i'll be farming food with my tomb lord uh throughout throughout the ice golem 
and Fire Knight, I'll just have to be speeding through my regular team, and then the rest of Champion Training, I'll be using Brute. Um, Champ Chase, I will be doing some pulls. Yes, of course, I'll be doing some pulls. I do have um, some extra Ancients. So we'll stream, uh, sorry, not stream, we'll make a video for some, some sharp pulls uh, for 2x Ancients. And um, yeah, so these Artifact Enhancement events are easy for me. Uh, Classic Arena is easy. Um, so once we come down to this champion training, uh, I will probably have to do them with brews again, or maybe start leveling up all the ancients that was pulled from the champ chase. Um, I don't have too much food saved up. Obviously, like I have some, but um, no, I'm not gonna. Not it's not. It won't be super easy, and I don't really like training tournaments, anyways. <laughs> But uh, so I'll, I'll be doing that. Spider will be easy. Um, this is a big energy sink. I have a ton of energy saved up from uh, winning CVC and um, just saving up the um, saving up all the extra pots from the free gifts and the year end and stuff. So these are all free free energy, right? Like you know, you just save them. I don't really uh, use them, and there hasn't been any events that are worthwhile. So I just been easy to save. So <clears throat> those are probably going into the Spider Tournament, um, and then that'll be done. Classic Arena will be done. Artifact Enhancement. Summon Rush. I have some shards saved up. I don't have um, too, too much. Well, actually, I guess I do have a lot. Yeah, I do have a lot. So I have 17 saved up. I have 211 Ancients. So I'll be pulling probably like 60 or 50 or something. I want to keep at least 150 for any guarantees that they might pop out. Um, and yeah, I'll probably be pulling, uh, sacreds during the, um, during the, uh, summon rush. But as, um, like generally my mentality is I want to try to save as many of the sacred shards as I can. So I won't pull the 20 if I, I won't pull for 20 fragments if I can help it. And I'll just pull for five. Um, and then I'll skip, um, uh, if I pull for five, then I'll just skip the last 15 from summon rush. Um. It's also going to be a 10x event. I, I mean, you know, maybe the 10x event is just so juicy that I end up pulling sacreds. I don't know. Like I'm kind of flexible that way, uh, but I know, you know, you might not be in the same position, right? So don't be, don't be baited. Don't get baited by 10x events and you know stuff like that. Follow your, follow what you can do. Okay. Uh, Dragon tournament will. Will be straightforward and finally the artifact enhancement event i don't expect to win any tournaments um so i will be i'll be with you guys all the way to the end of uh to the end of this fusion um yeah i'm just trying to think about any other pointers um up to this point i mean if you guys make sure you guys are yeah, make sure you guys are saving your gear, selling your gear, doing a gear cleanse for the artifact enhancement events. I mean, those are really, really important. If you guys are using brews for training, remember that brews take silver. So if you guys are on a silver crunch, uh, you guys might need to, um, you know, do a little bit extra farming just to keep up the silver. Um, and yeah, I think, uh, let's see, any more from my notes here? I think we're okay. I think I wanted to. I covered everything that I wanted to cover. Um, yeah. So, I mean, overall, it could have been way worse from Plarium. Um, so, they gave us an extra fifteen. I've remembered there was one that they didn't give us any, where we had to complete all of them. So, and in, in any case, um, I hope you guys um, can do it. It's he's an insanely good champion. Um, there has been some chatter about being overhyped is he overhyped is he worse than duchess like i think the argument is that yes he is worse than duchess just duchess but he is still probably the best fusion for any account at any point in time <laughs> you know what i mean like it's uh like people comparing comparing him to helicath i was like dude this guy doesn't compare to helicath like he's way better than helicath i'll say that right now he's way better than Helica helicath 
the only champion that comes like that would give this guy a run would probably be like Brogni. Um because Brogni opened up so much for clan boss and his kit is just generally really strong, but I mean, this guy I would argue is even stronger than Brogni because you can play this guy anywhere. Like he'll be good anywhere. Even clan boss, he'll be good. He won't be as good as Brogni, but he will still be good and he'll be an answer to some people that are missing three turn three turn block D buff champions. Um you know, and and then you can still use him to uh, play everywhere, like Doom Tower and stuff. So why would you invest in a sole purpose champion when you have, when you have a champion that basically does everything? You build him, you play him everywhere. Of course, you know, I'm speaking from a generalist point of view. If you're endgame, then you build champions for a specific purpose. Then you might just build this guy for the arena or what have you, right? Hydra or whatever. I mean, for Hydra, he's he's going to be good. But I can see how he's not as good as Duchess because Duchess is more proactive, whereas this guy is more reactive. Because cleansing is just reactive, um, and especially since he does no damage. So Duchess is more proactive because you can buff your whole team for attack up. Um, and, and yeah, she's just generally better. Like Her veil is also good. More versatility in uh, Hydra. You know, also redu uh, reduces the chance of your team getting you know, sniped, sniped off in arena and stuff. So, you know, I would say he's worse, but if you're having a conversation against Duchess, you're pretty good. <laughs> Anyways, uh, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. If you guys like the content, uh, make sure you guys like and subscribe. Um, I will be updating my schedule as I go along. If there's anything new or interesting that pops up, or maybe if I find, figure out something else that I want to say. Uh, but yeah, best of luck and uh, see you guys in the next one.